So can you see this picture? There are two cannulas here. This is our uh, heart. This is right atrium. This is the superior vena cava, and this is the inferior vena cava. So we take blood from the inferior vena cava and return it back to the superior vena cava in female jugular configuration of BB ECMO. So what's happening here? We are taking blood from the inferior vena cava, and it, this blood is going to the ECMO machine, or you can say membrane oxygenator, and it's coming back to the superior vena cava. Now it's going from here, some blood is going to the right ventricle, from right ventricle it will go to the lungs, but some part of fully oxygenated blood is sucked down to the inferior vena cava drainage cannula. So basically you can, you can see the configuration, if this, if this cannula is near to the drainage cannula, so most of the blood will be sucked out from uh, return cannula and it will just continue to rotate and, and round and round. It's not going to the right ventricle. If it is not going to right ventricle, it will not go to lungs and left ventricle. And of course, patient will not get oxygenated because oxygenated blood is repeatedly sucking, uh, sucked back to the uh, excess cannula or drainage cannula. So it's very important to keep some distance between drainage cannula and excess cannula. So how do we... Uh, identify that patient is recirculating. So recirculation, it decreases the efficacy of ECMO because oxygenated blood is not reaching to tissues because it's just uh, going round and round. It's not going to right ventricle. It's not going to left ventricle. And of course, if it's not going to left ventricle, it's not going to uh, oxygenate the tissues. So clinically significant uh, recirculation is suspected when the, in spite of 100% oxygen, there is low saturation and uh, is, there is low uh, saturation. You can check the saturation or low PO2 that's in the radial arch line. And uh, if uh, you increase the pre oxid more than 10% of post oxid that means that patient is having recirculation. Also, if uh, you can see the, that's a crude method, you can see the color of uh, both tubings. If color of both tubings are more or less same, that is drainage and excess cannula color, it shouldn't be same. Drainage cannula uh, should be a bit, little bit less brighter than uh, excess cannula. So that, uh, sorry, return cannula. So if the drainage cannula and uh, return cannula are of both of same color, it means there is significant uh, uh, oxygen uh, recirculation is there. Uh, basically, to summarize, oxygenation in ACMO is dependent on the following factors. It's the extracorporeal blood flow and cardiac output ratio, how much uh, blood is going through the membrane, how much uh, part of cardiac output is going through the membrane. If cardiac output increases and uh, your ECMO flow is same, patient will be hypoxic. That's quite understandable. A uh, ratio of more than 60%. So uh, ideally, 60% of cardiac output should pass through the membrane to keep a patient uh, properly oxygenated and keep him in physiological range. Just in case there is increased metabolic uh, rate or it will lead to increased oxygen consumption, Increased oxygen consumption will lead to decrease in venous oxygen saturation. As you know, this venous oxygen saturation or the content of venous oxygenation is mixing in the right atrium. It will lead to low oxygenation. ACMO flow, if you want to increase the ACMO flow, suppose uh, your cardiac output is high and your ACMO blood flow is not uh, meeting this criteria and patient is desaturating, you can insert just another cannula. So it may be bifemoral, a drainage cannula and you can just put back through the right IJV. That will be your uh, return cannula. So it will be a VVV ECMO configuration. As you know, content of arterial oxygen is also dependent of hemoglobin. You can increase hemoglobin to increase the content of arterial oxygen. You, can, you should uh, really look for recirculation. If patient is recirculating, then you may need to reposition your cannulas and uh, of course, membrane characteristic, which we'll discuss later. 
so this is the uh, so another part so we did, uh, we talked about oxygenation but what about co2 we have to do something for co2 as well your lungs are not functioning so yes we have uh, these modalities in our ecmo so co2 is very simple it's all dissolved and it's uh, all depends on the h2o plus co2 and co2 should diffuse it's a passive process so what you have you are what are you going to do so when you are uh blood is passing through the membrane there are it's uh, so your co2 just diffuses out into the sweep gas so sweep gas is the one which is uh, oxygenating your membrane it might be pure oxygen or it might be a combination of oxygen or nitrogen because uh, there is no co2 so co2 just diffuses out you don't have to do anything further just you just have to go up with sweep flow or go down with sweep flow just to remove co2 but of course if your membrane is not working or if your blood flow is very low then co2 is not going to re uh, remove the so we need to keep these factors in mind as well mm -hmm.